Hello, my lovelies. I hope everybody is doing well today. I'm doing really well because I've been playing with drinks. <laughs> Welcome to episode 56 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I am River Kane, and I am alone again this week. Almost had Ren. I actually just got off the phone with her. She was getting off work, and she had thought she was going to join me, but she is brain dead. They had her looking at teeny tiny things, and she said she just can't. So... So that's okay. I am ready to do this on my own again. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to break spells that have been cast on you. I actually have a feeling that I've got an ancient curse on my dad's side of the family. Uh, I'll get more into that as we get on with the episode. But first, I have been playing with cocktails, which you can probably already tell. I have a friend in town. Remember that friend I went to visit up in New Jersey back in whenever it was? Well, she's down here visiting me for a little bit, and we have had a blast. She's helping me work on my cocktail book. So we've been tasting all the different cocktails because it's nice to have more than just Rins, in my opinions. It's nice to have another palate tasting these drinks because what I think is good may not be good. So it's nice to have her taste. So we've been having a good time. Um, And, you know, she has been my taste tester this week, day, however long she's been here. So today I am drinking the Pagan Peach. And we were in a champagne mood. So we mixed champagne with peach liqueur. I thought about doing it with peach schnapps, which I think my husband would like better because schnapps is very sweet. I am not a sweet fan. So I've got to try it both ways. But what I did today was I did peach vodka with champagne and I put the vodka in a shaker with ice to make it super cold and then poured it into the uh, champagne, and I added a splash of cranberry, which I I like that added depth of the cranberry. So this is what I'm working on. So so right now, this is the pagan peach in progress. So go out and try it and hope you like it. Okay, so to the topic at hand, breaking spells cast on you. I guess the first thing you really need to know is how can you even tell there has been a spell or something placed on you? And what is it that's been placed on you? Is it a hex, a jinx, a curse, an enchantment? What what is it? And what's the difference between all of those things? All of those things are basically spells, but they're different types of spells. So a jinx, a jinx is basically bad luck. It's annoying and it may screw up something important, but it's not life ending. Another definition of jinx is that a jinx is a form of malevolent magic where the subject gets bad luck and minor misfortunes. It's simple, but nasty, and it isn't meant to seriously harm someone. And it usually only lasts for a little while. So next is a hex. It is worse than a jinx. Hex spells are nearly always used for revenge purposes, which honestly, a jinx probably is used for revenge as well. Although the trickster gods think jinxes are funny just for themselves. The bad luck thing is just funny, Um, not necessarily meant for revenge, but a hex is almost always revenge. And it is only placed on someone if they have hurt you or others and you are trying to punish them who these people who have been hurtful, you know, so by definition, that's actually exacting revenge. A hex is a form of malevolent magic, more powerful than a jinx. It lasts longer and is usually, quote, broken when the subject learns their lesson. So it's only there until they learn their lesson as to whatever they've done wrong. Another way of looking at it is hex is the practice of casting an evil spell over something or someone. A hex is expected to bring bad luck to the one who is put under it. The word hex itself is derived from the German word hagzisa, which means witch, which I probably pronounced hagzisa. German is a more guttural language, and my one of my kids is actually taking German in school. Um, so she would probably laugh at me for my pronunciation, but 
That word means witch or witchery or hag in German. Over the years, it's become associated with the idea of uh, bringing bad luck upon someone. The hex is intended to cause someone harm with the support of some kind of supernatural force in play. A hex makes your milk turn sour, your family and animals get sick, your crops die, etc. It does a number on you, in other words. A curse. This is the worst of the three so far. It causes devastating harm and lasts for a really long time and is super hard to get rid of. It may even last for multiple generations, which is what I think is affecting my family. And we are German in background. So as you know, German heritage, there is witchcraft all the way back to Germany, which is why the Brothers Grimm, they're German. They came up with all these stories based on on German folklore. Anyway, a curse is on the level of a divine punishment. And in most cases, the one casting it is evil, but not always. Like I've I've been watching that new Charmed um, series. I really like the older one better, but I've gotten into the new one too. And there is a, a curse placed on one of the characters in that series. And he, the, the person cursing them wasn't evil. She was persecuted. She was a witch and had been persecuted by someone in this guy's line who was a witch hunter way back in the day. And he horribly killed her. He was an evil person, but it is a generational curse. So it travels through the generations. And so it's interesting in that series that he is trying to right the wrongs that have been done by his ancestor in order to break the curse. The curse is the practice of wishing bad luck and bad things to happen to happen to someone or something. The word curse comes from Old English, the word curse, C-U-R-S, meaning a prayer that evil or harm befall one consignment of a person to an evil fate. A curse is the most powerful, and if done well, it can last a lifetime or even longer generationally, which is what I really think may be going on with my family. It can be cast on a person or a family, and it can last forever or until something is done to atone for whatever caused them to be cursed. And then I should mention one last thing, enchantments. An enchantment is a spell placed on something, a person, place, or thing that if something is, quote, bewitched, then it's enchanted. I normally think of enchantment as a good thing as opposed to a hex, which I think of as a bad thing. Enchantment somehow, it it can be like a charm. You know, you, it, it can be the same thing. A charm can be the same thing as an enchantment, a spell placed on something, uh, but the object itself actually can be enchanted itself. It's it, it could be considered a general term for amulets or talismans. I found a website and it's written by this woman. She is her name is Maxim, and she is calls herself the spellcaster Maxim. And she is at spellshelp.com, S-P-E-L-L-S-H-E-L-P dot com. And she gives 12 ways. And some I kind of paraphrased through here. Go check her website out to get all the details. But she gives 12 ways that you can tell if you have had a cast, a spell cast on you, because you can't break anything until you know that it's been done to you to begin with. So she says to look for feeling weird, that you feel weird or strange or maybe unsettled. Maybe you feel like there's something inside of you that's affecting your thoughts. She says, you definitely look worse than usual. Maybe you look aged or pinched, withdrawn, somehow unwell. You know how sometimes you see someone and you're like, wow, they they don't look as good. You know, there might not be anything about the way they're acting, but you look at them and you're like, something's wrong. They, they look different. Maybe you've gained or lost a lot of weight, or maybe you've lost interest in sex. Um That means maybe the problem is located somewhere in your lower chakras. Perhaps your body odor has changed unpleasantly. Animals suddenly uh, react differently to you. 
Maybe the spell caused you dental, hair, or nail problems. Have you had a, you know, you used to have beautiful long nails and now you've got the white spots and they're chipping, which could just be that you're not eating correctly or you need to take vitamins, but it also could be a sign that perhaps a curse or a hex or a jinx has been placed on you. Maybe you develop bad habits. I mean, even something as serious as drug addiction or alcoholism. You grow to enjoy unhealthy foods or you start smoking. You know, a lot of us that try to diet, as everybody does on and off over the, their life, especially when you've had children, um, you know, you you do gain weight and you do look to food as a depression reliever. So it could simply be that, but it also could be a curse or some kind of spell cast on you. Pay attention to any recent unhealthy habits that you haven't had before. You know, it's more than just low willpower. I I have no willpower. My husband is like, he shakes his head and he doesn't say anything. Bless his heart. He's very supportive of whatever I choose to do. I'm a grown up and, you know, he's not going to get on me and say, oh, you're not supposed to eat that or whatever. He, he is, um, he's, he's a good one. I found a good one. And I'm sorry if you can hear my dogs. My friend had gone outside to talk on the phone and she's now coming back in. And my dogs are acting like they've never seen her before in their entire life, which is what they do. It's the little chihuahua brain. Anyway, I have low willpower. I, I just have no willpower. Um, but if it's more than just that lack of willpower, it, if it's something like you feel like something is making you not, you know, do these things where you can't say no, pay attention to that. Your relationship with other people might have changed. Maybe you find yourself picking fights where you've never done that before, starting arguments. Maybe your thoughts and actions are being misinterpreted by other people, regardless of how you're trying to come across. People are taking whatever you do in the wrong way. That could be a sign. A streak of bad luck that you've been having recently. Perhaps you've lost your job and money and, you know, how things come in threes. There's that number three again that we always talk about. You suddenly start to hate your partner. You notice things about them that you've never noticed before. You lose your sexual interest in them or you grow some kind of aversion to, to him or her that's like out of the blue. This might mean that some kind of love spell has been placed on you or something along those lines. So pay attention. Family. You, you might notice a change in the attitude of your family to you or you to them. This is also indicative of perhaps a love spell of some kind. Pay attention to your dreams. This is one area that spells can't get to. Your subconscious a lot of times will try to protect you. And if you're having horrible dreams, it may be your subconscious trying to warn you. Maybe keep a dream diary for a little bit. See, see if there's a pattern to your dreams that maybe can give you an inkling as to, as to whether something's been cast on you or not. Feeling apathetic or depressed or wasting your time by spending over two and a half hours every day watching TV or browsing the internet or using TikTok, I'm guilty. Um, you know, I, to me, if that's a sign of a spell being cast on me, wow, everybody I know has a, has a spell cast on them. I, I do feel like COVID started a lot of that for a lot of people. So, you know, I'm not sure when this... Um, article was written. It could have been pre-COVID. It didn't have a date. I tried to find it so that I could tell you guys. But, you know, it, it's not necessarily a sign of a spell, <clears throat> especially given our day and time with COVID and all the things we've all been through. But it is something to keep in mind and to consider. Um, pay attention to your phobias. Have you suddenly gotten a fear of something that you've never really been afraid of before? That may indicate what kind of magic spell might have been used against you. She also goes on to say that she is actually really good at spell diagnosis. So certainly you can go and, and check out her website. It's posted with my blog, my, my blog, my podcast. Um, she is located in Russia, but she does speak English fluently. And, you know, you can go and check her out on your website and decide for yourself. The Learn Religions website, I went to them as I always do. They 
are fantastic. They're also listed in the um, list of credits that I give when I do these things. They said, to know whether a spell has been cast on you, you should be able to answer all three of the following questions with a yes. Number one, is there something in your life, is someone in your life that you may have angered or offended in some way? Well, wow, I think it's more accurate for me to ask, is there anyone I haven't angered or offended lately in some way? So that one by itself is definite yes for me. I do that every day. Number two, is that person someone who has the magical knowledge or uh, to place a harmful spell on you? Well, a lot of the people I know are witchy people. I do tend to um, hang out with the witchy sort of people, but I can't think of any, most of the witches that I know are good people. They're, they're not vindictive. I can't see any of them casting a spell to harm anyone. But, you know, I don't know. We don't all talk about the ins and outs of our of our practice. And then number three, is a hex or a curse the only possible explanation for whatever is happening to you? You know, so that if you answer yes to all three of those, then you might have had a spell cast on you. It's not definitive just because you answer yes to all of those doesn't mean, oh my God, I've got a spell cast on me, but it is definitely something where you can start looking into it. Pardon me while I have another drink. My throat's going raw. Mm. Okay. So you think someone has cast something on you. What do you do? So before I get into the solutions, I've got to tell you why I think I have a generational curse on my family. I think somebody in my ancestry on my dad's side, I've told you before, I think he's a witch, was cursed. And I think it's been passed down through the generations. Now, it's nothing horrible, which makes it sound more along the lines of a jinx, but I've never heard of a generational jinx before. You know, we grew up pretty average. We're privileged even. Uh, We're white privileged people. Um, but we often have those, these horrible things happen and we always joke about it being, oh, well, well, that's our bad luck. That's our family. That's the way it always is for us. And like when I was a kid, I broke my leg running, just, just running, didn't fall down, didn't fall in a hole, didn't trip, just running. And suddenly my (laughs) leg hurt. And when I went to the doctor for it, they did x-rays and they're like, nope, there's nothing wrong. So I'm hobbling around on it for, you know, I don't remember how old I was. I was in middle school, I think. And I even made myself a a crutch because it hurts so bad. My mom's like that there's something wrong here. So they took me back and they're like, oh, wow, your first x-rays were really blurry. We didn't see the break. So I walked on it for like 10 days. That's the same thing with my arm. I broke my arm when I was really little, like six years old. And I was told by my uncle, don't tell anybody because it was his fault that I hurt myself. And, you know, so I walked around with it for days before I was crying out in my sleep. And my mom was like, there's something wrong. And they took me to the hospital. I had a broken arm. I've broken toes. I broke my finger playing volleyball, Um, tore my ligaments in college. But I really don't think I can blame that one on the curse. That one I can probably blame on stupidity and alcohol. I was doing limber overs down the hallway in my dorm in the college and I landed wrong and my leg went one way and the rest of my body went another. I ripped all the ligaments in my knee, Um, had two knee surgeries. Um, You know, I'm horrible at gambling. That you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a curse, but it's not just me and my family. My sister, she broke her collarbone. Of course, alcohol can be blamed for that one as well. Uh, She was standing on a picnic table. Yes. After having drunk and she fell off and broke her collarbone. Um, You know, I mean, there's just my, my brother had a crack in his vertebrae when he was growing up. There's just all these symptoms and we always laugh it off. It's not just that it's it's stupid things like not having my one of my daughters always has um 
the, when we go to a restaurant, she's the one that they always forget to bring food to. And there's always something wrong with her order. And we just laugh it off. Oh, that's the luck. And I started thinking about it. The more I go down this path of witchcraft, I'm like, I, I think there might be a generational curse there because we are hurt. It's not like it's just bad luck. There are broken bones and there is pain involved. Broke my toe in high school. Um, just recently, last Christmas, I fell down the stairs and broke my toe falling down the stairs. And that's now as a grown up. Um, so I, I've begun to think that there may be a generational curse, which actually makes me think of Practical Magic. I love that movie. And that was where there was a generational curse in their family by the ancestor in their own line who didn't want them to be hurt, that any of the women in, their, in her line to be hurt by the man who, you know, by men. And so it was this generational curse curse and the whole movie is about breaking that curse fantastic movie if you all haven't seen it, i'm sure all of you all have you are witches like me and that is a, a divine movie but at any rate i'm curious that if there is some kind of curse how can i break it or resolve whatever it is that my ancestor did you know being german there is so much history of magic in Germany. So what have I found? Tell, tell, let me tell you what I have found. So magic mirror seems to be a very common way to break jinxes, hexes, and curses. So there's several ways to do this, and I have a whole bunch of them to go through. So, and, and I think you can probably listen to what I say and make up your own way that sounds right for you. So the first one is you take a mirror and you consecrate the mirror like you would any of your magical tools. Like, you know, you make sure that it's clean and, and uh, charged and that kind of thing. Then you place the mirror standing up in a bowl of black salt, which in many hoodoo traditions, actually a lot of faiths use black salt, um, but saying that it is a uh, protection provider that it repels ne negativity. This drink, y'all, I'm telling you, if you all like peaches, you would love this. It's, I'm going to take another drink. Hold on one second. Okay. In the bowl, facing in a bowl, facing the mirror, you place something that represents your target, the person who is cursing you. It can be a photo, which would be nice if you know who it is, a business card, a small doll, an item that they own, or even their name written on a piece of paper. This will reflect that individual's negative energy back to them. You know, there is a witch that I read about in North Georgia, and she says she uses magic mirror this way a lot. She said it's a great way to break curses and hexes, especially if you don't know who cast it. So you can use something generic to represent the person who was cast if you don't know who it is. Sometimes you do know. Sometimes there's no question. You absolutely know who it is. You can make a mirror box. So you take mirrors you, that face each other in a box, or you can use a toilet paper roll. That works. Um, you can do uh, an Altoids tin, something. Anyway, you put mirrors in it and you place an object associated with the caster in between the mirrors and you seal it. Did you know? I have a did you know. In some folk magic traditions, the mirror box is created by using shards of a mirror that you've smashed yourself with a hammer while chanting that person's name. And I kind of love that idea. Who doesn't love smashing stuff with a hammer? That's therapeutic in and of itself. Um, then again, I think back to the episode Ren and I did on bad luck. I, I don't remember what it was for, um, where breaking a mirror is like seven years of bad luck. So I mm, don't know. Anyway, I love the idea. Another idea for mirrors might be to hold a mirror in front of you facing away from your body and you chant the following or something that you make up yourself. Circle of reflection, circle of protection, may the sender of all harm feel the power of this charm. And to me, I think I would probably 
do that in a circle, maybe three times in a circle, but use your own. Everybody has their own way of practicing. You feel your energy the way that you feel your energy. Yes, I'm, you know, I can't tell you that what works for me is going to work for you. Do think, think of your own uh, the way you, you practice. Wow. <laughs> think of the way that you practice and go from there and, you know, change this to work for you. Another way, and this one was very interesting. I think this one came from Wiki How. I'm almost positive this is where I got this one from. Another way to use mirrors for reversing a curse, you get two mirrors. Well, actually, this is what you need. Two small mirrors on stands if possible, or if not on stands, able to be propped up. One black candle and one stick of sandalwood incense. And you try to do this exactly at midnight. You light the stick of incense and you allow that smoke to drift and build around your chosen ritual area. You carefully carve an X into the wax of the candle. You don't just lightly carve it. You dig that X in there deeply. You want to carve it deeply. You set up the two mirrors facing each other. If you don't have stands, you've got to have something that will prop them up so that they are actually facing each other. You put, you put the carved candle in between the mirrors. And then what you'll notice when you do this is that you'll see the candle appearing to reflect back and forth between the two mirrors infinitely. It, it's one of those, you know, mirror to mirror to mirror to mirror in, in, going on indefinitely. You light the candle. You relax and allow your eyes to shift focus back and forth between the two mirrors. As you look back and forth, you concentrate on the negative energy of the curse. You picture it as something like viable, something a lot, something physical, like a black cloud of smoke or a mist. And you say something like, the magic upon me be trapped this night between these mirrors, never to see light, that kind of thing. You can improvise, make your own words, as we always say. Repeat that incantation. And you picture the curse getting trapped in the reflected surface of the mirrors. And you continue to repeat those words over and over, depending on your belief and your practice. It might be nine times. It might be three times. Whatever you feel is appropriate to allow that energy and power to build. And you imagine the darkness of the curse being sent back to its original sender. Allow the candle to burn all the way down on its own. And leave the two mirrors facing each other for one month. I found that interesting. It didn't talk about what to do with the candle. And I did find several sites that talked about burying the candle away from your home, pouring uh, maybe moon water or protective water around it, um, that kind of thing. That's a topic for a whole different discussion. Another way to break curses, hexes, and jinx, jinxes is to use puppets or dolls. Create a puppet or doll to represent yourself or whoever the victim of the curse is if you're trying to help someone else who's a victim. And charge the puppet with the task of taking on the damage in your place or the victim's place. It's actually pretty simple because the puppet acts as a decoy. And you follow the instructions for puppet making, which... I don't know how to do that. I'll, I, I think I might do an episode on puppet making at some point um, and tell you how to do that. But you say something like, I have made you and your name is blank. You shall receive the negative energy sent by blank in my place. Or if you want it to rhyme, like I always do, you can say something like, I have made you, you wear my face. You shall collect bag magic for me in my place. You place the poppet someplace out of the way. And once you believe the curse's effects are no longer affecting you, you get rid of that poppet. They said the best way to get rid of it is to just take it some way far away from your home and dispose of it. That seems dangerous to me. So I feel like maybe burying it or setting fire to it or, you know, which setting fire to it may release all of the negativity that it has kept from you, which could come and hit you. So just keep that in mind. It didn't really say, this article didn't really say. Uh, another way to use a poppet is to place the poppet in a box and bury it under a thin layer of soil. 
directly above where you buried the puppet, you light a bonfire and you chant your wish that the curse cast against you be consumed along with the flames that burned the puppet lying in the shallow grave below. You could try elemental cleansing. Water. You can take a purifying bath that includes a blend of hyssop, rue, salt, and other protective herbs. Some people believe that this will wash away the curse. Now, I'm thinking curse is the worst of the three, so I'm not sure that that would be enough for a curse, but it might be enough for a hex or a jinx. Um, I doubt it would work for a generational curse because I've taken a whole lot of herbal baths and protective baths over the years, and I am just broke my toe last Christmas, so mm, don't think so. You can try cleansing with earth and water. This is easily done in the shower. You combine earth and water for this cleansing by washing thoroughly with soap and then using a pumice stone to smooth your skin. Gently rub the surface of your skin with the pumice and envision washing and smoothing away the parts of your body affected by negative energy. Be careful not to go too deeply and rip your skin. You could try cleansing with air and fire. Use scented candles as this combines both air and fire. Once you've cleaned your, cleansed yourself, and I'm thinking, you know, feathers are a great, a great way to, to have the, the flame and the smoke from the candles waft over yourself. Um, but once you've cleaned yourself, cleansed yourself, Light a candle of some kind of pleasing or cleansing scent, like vanilla. I love vanilla. That's one of my favorites. You could do sandalwood. Um, light the candle and let the flame consume the vapors that remain of the negative spell. That, to me, is another one that seems a little too easy. Um, bath spells, going back to water. I, Wiki how oh, this was the one that I, I looked up on Wiki how. Let me take one more drink. My throat's killing me. All right, so WikiHow has a nice little bath spell. You throw a few handfuls of salt and a sprinkling of baking soda into hot, a hot bath. You can use, to me, Himalayan bath salt is my favorite, the Himalayan salt. You can use Epsom salt. There's any kind, whatever salt you prefer. You visualize positive energy flowing into the bath. You close your eyes and hold your hands in prayer or pose over the water. You can hold your hands flat out over the water. Then you say a purification spell or a prayer if you use a deity, uh, asking for the negative energy to be removed from you. So you might say something like, salt and water make me pure. Bring me now the perfect cure. Let this water make me free as I will, so mote it be. Or if you want to use your deity or ask the deity's help, you say, dear God or goddess, thank you for taking care of me. Tonight, I ask that you cleanse me of the negative energy that has been plaguing me. Please reverse this curse and make me pure. Amen. Use your own words. You soak for at least 30 to 40 minutes. Give the water time to cleanse you. Get into the bath. Sink below the water. Go under the water. Close your eyes and relax. During this time, imagine a white light surrounding you and think positive thoughts. You might even want to chant that spell or prayer during the bath, which will help you stay focused. Because as I've said before, my mind will go, did I take out the garbage? You know, that that's where my mind goes. So repeating the chants would help me do that. They say meditation is a way to possibly get rid of a spell cast on you. You meditate on a candle for 30 minutes, inhaling the pleasant scent and letting it permeate through your pores. You repeat this once a week until you believe the ill effects of neg the negative spell are passed. You can make protection satchels and amulets, i.e. You wear, you wear worn protection. Um, you can make a protection satchel out of lavender and sage and you tie it in a small piece of cloth to carry with you or you put it in one of those cute little bags that you can get on Etsy. Um, I, I think there is so much on amulets and satchels that I will have to do that as a different episode. But that is something that to me, this is more of a protection than it is a get rid of something that's already been cast on you. 
This next one I found quite fascinating and I can't remember where I found it, but it is, it's one of the sites that I list with this, a reverse candle spell. So you cut the wick off at the top end of the candle using a knife or an athame. You turn the candle upside down and you carve a new tip into this end, carving outwards at an angle until the bottom becomes tapered and the wick is visible. You rub reversing oil or olive oil on the candle. You carve the enemy's name on the candle with the knife or your athame. You do this in a reverse manner as it would appear if you were looking at it in a mirror. If the name of the enemy is unknown, you carve a short phrase of intent into the candle, which should not be done in reverse. Place the mirror on a table or desk or flat surface. If you have a picture of the person who cast the spell on you, you that you wish to reverse, you write a petition with your intent on the back of their picture and you place that picture face down on top of the mirror. And then you place the candle in a candle holder and place it on top of the mirror, on top of the picture. Um, You can also use aluminum foil. It's reflective as well, but a mirror I think would work better. So you light the candle, you pray over the candle and visualize your intentions and desires, and you anoint the candle with reversing oil. So the second time I came across reversing oil, I'm like, okay, what exactly is reversing oil? And you may be asking the same thing. It can cleanse, protect, and return negative energy to the sender. If you feel someone has sent you malevolent energy or put a spell, hex, or curse on you or jinx, this will reverse those intentions and return it to them. You can actually buy it on Amazon at your or at, from your favorite magical supplier anywhere. I'll have to see if I can find more on this and maybe um, on how to make your own. And post that for the my our patrons. So you pray that the evil may be reflected back to the sender while concentrating on your desires. Excuse me. You let the candle burn until it goes out by itself. Take the materials and place them in the trash in a trash bag after the ritual is finished. Dispose of everything away from your home by throwing it into a dumpster or burying it near a crossroads. According to the article Hoodoo in Theory and Practice by Catherine Ronwood, crossroads are considered to be a magically charged place uh, by many cultures. You know, I, I, I watch Supernatural and, of course, the crossroad demons, that kind of thing. But it's not just hype made up by American movie writers, uh, series writers. It's a real thing that all kinds of cultures believe in. So to me, that. I don't like the idea of just throwing it into a dumpster. That bothers me. Uh, Clean the knife, the candle holder, and the mirror thoroughly. If you wish, you may perform a short cleansing ritual to remove any energies, which I think is generally a good time, a good idea anytime you do a spell. So those are some ideas for how to get rid of curses, hexes, and jinxes. There is so much more. I will probably do another topic on ways to do this later. Um, I am going to probably try some of these. I don't really know. And hopefully some of you can give me pointers with this generational curse thing. If I cast it, can I protect all of my family? You know, my sister, she's got children and my brothers, they have children. So if I cast this, Will it protect all of them as well? So I I would be very curious to hear your all's ideas on this. At any rate, that's all I've got for now. I appreciate you guys listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, You can find us at our website, c3witchypodcast.com, www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you can find links to all our social media. I am working really hard to get our our stuff back up for our patrons. I'm already late for the June newsletter. It's really, really hard to do this just by myself without Ren. I'm I'm hoping she comes back soon. But 
you guys help me a lot. I really appreciate the patrons that we have out there. You guys save my life every day. Um, I, I really, really appreciate it. I am going to try to continue to give back to you guys for everybody else. If you want to support us, please come to our Patreon and any, any amount, $1 a month is only $12 a year. And yeah, that makes a huge difference to us. So, uh, you can come to us at Patreon, www.patreon.com slash C3 witchy podcast. And, um, you'll, you'll get stuff and I'm trying to get more stuff for the people that are already our patrons. So thank you for listening. Oh, check out my Etsy store. Of course, bats and bobbles, Inc. at dot Etsy.com. I have been working really hard to put up more stuff for you guys. Um, all I can think of right now, I have started making tarot deck card card holders, and I have made one so far, and I love it. I am going to make many, many more. So come check out the stuff that I got. I got jewelry. I'm putting up jewelry. Everybody loves to wear a, a pentacle or a pentagram or some kind of witchy charms on their body. You can layer these things. Um, so yeah, come check me out. And thank you guys for listening. I will be back. And until then, stay witchy. <laughs>